So lately, I've been obsessed with these super simplified Lego sets, and it's gotten me thinking, why can't we take our 3D printers to supersize the bricks to create some mega versions of these builds? Now, before you run out and just start printing a whole bunch of bricks supersized, you need to know specifically which ones you're gonna need for the project that you're trying to build. And in some cases, you might have a hard time finding specific sets of bricks. Well, if you're lucky, you might find one of the other makers that are out there that have created some of these that have posted those online and just to give you a heads up lego has been actively going at and taking down a bunch of different listings across different file sites so just be aware of that lego please don't come at me for this video and a perfect example of what i'm going for is this oversimplified star destroyer file that i found online that i brought into my slicer scaled it up to 400 percent of the original size and got it printed in a few different color variations and what i love about this particular set of prints is that it's so simplified that it's just 15 parts that that you need to print, which is a perfect test case for testing this all out. And depending on the prints and how large you scale those up, it's gonna impact how these parts fit together. With the tolerances that you have with your typical Lego bricks are gonna be amplified as you start scaling them up. Now, what I find really interesting is that my tolerances were super tight for these set of prints right here, which is a valid issue that you might run into. Not actually, I was expecting this to have the opposite effect, which is gonna be looser connection points because as you're scaling up your 3D prints, the tolerance levels between parts that they had accounted for in the original designs are gonna be amplified as you're scaling this up, which leads into the second option when it comes to these types of 3D prints, which is designing your own set of files, which if you're familiar with Nate from the internet where he's building this massive life-size Lego castle, that's exactly what he did. He went and designed his own set of files that print without supports. They have twist on parts, which is just incredible. I'm not going that route. I'm going the super simplified route, which is gonna take us to the third option, which is using an online tool that I found called Mechabrick. So what's really cool about this website is that it allows you to not only browse creations that other people have created and see exactly what Lego parts take up those particular builds, but you can also design your own Lego builds. And I really wanted to see if I could recreate this Millennium Falcon huge, and thankfully I found another user that had recreated this on Mechabricks. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no easy way to mass export all of the bricks individually from each of these builds. So what I ended up doing was going brick by brick and taking those codes and then individually loading them into a new workspace. And then you can use the export function and export those out as STL files. And then to try and keep everything organized, I named each of the files based on the brick name, plus the color I needed to be printed in, plus the number of those bricks that I need to have printed. Then I can bring those over into Elegoo Slicer and start organizing them and scaling them up to 400% of the original size. However, some of the bricks didn't end up slicing correctly and I realized I needed to actually repair some of those and since I'm on a Mac and I don't have the repair function, I'm gonna load those individual files into Mesh Mixer and run the Analyze tool to identify where the problem areas are and then auto repair them and then export those back as STL files and it looks like everything's slicing correctly. And since these are all relatively flat parts, I don't need to capture a lot of detail with them so I'm gonna be printing them all at 0.28 layer height a five top, three bottom, 10% infill, an adaptive infill pattern. And I'm gonna be changing all the line widths to 0.6 from 0.4 or whatever the variations are, except for the top layers because I want those to look as potentially clean and smooth as possible. But the most important setting that I'm gonna recommend that you use for these is going into your brim settings and changing it to automatic mouse ears. It's gonna apply a small brim in the corner of any sharp area of these bricks to make sure that there's no lifting corners when any of these print. And when it comes to supports, I'm using grid supports, manually painting those on, and for almost all of the parts, I'm not using supports. I'm just using the bridging and printing here and everything for the most part is printing properly, except where there are some extreme overhangs for some parts, I'll definitely be using some supports. Now there are significantly more parts to print with this build than the original, but that's where today's video sponsor comes into play. And that is none other than Elegoo, the makers of the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, which is not only a fast and affordable 3D printer, but it can also produce some absolutely incredible 
results. Paired with Elegoo Slicer, you can get up and running in a matter of minutes with this 3D printer and start 3D printing some of these massive Lego brick projects for yourself. This printer also comes with a dual sided build plate and I am absolutely loving printing with PLA on the smooth side where everything really adheres properly to that build plate. Not to mention Elegoo also has a wide variety of filaments that you can print with directly on the Centauri Carbon, everything from PLA to PETG to TPU to even some of those fancy carbon fiber filaments. This printer is just so easy to get up and running with and the print results look absolutely incredible. If you're interested in more information about any of Elegoo's products, you'll find links to those down below. I've even gone as far as creating a 3MF file that if you're interested in printing a set of these for yourself, you'll be able to, and it has everything properly labeled with which colors and set of bricks that you're gonna need to print for this. And you'll see for a lot of the parts after it's printed here, you'll see the little mouse ear brim that you can just easily peel off and not have to worry about any excess flashing or anything else around the outer edges. And then here again, you can see where there was no supports printed with everything. And there's just some really extreme bridging going on printing these at the 400% of the original size. And it comes out to 70 different 3D printed parts for this entire build, which is just a mountain full of these large Lego bricks. Now comes the fun part of trying to follow along with the original instructions and get this all put together. Now, unlike this first set that I put together that had super tight tolerances, even when I scaled this up to 400% of the original size, this one here as anticipated, more or less just really easily glides together. However, they're kind of friction held in place, but not very well. So what I'm gonna end up doing is using some 3D gloop along the way to make sure that all of the parts are nice and secure. And check out how amazing this turned out. It was definitely a good bit looser with each of the individual bricks compared to that first one that we assembled, but with a little bit of 3D gloop, I was able to get these all assembled properly and it just turned out incredible. This is exactly what I was hoping for, basically a supersized version of this basic Lego kit just super sized and 3D printed that I can now get on display. And speaking of, I ended up finding a Lego display set that I found over on Printables and I ended up printing that. And what's really cool about this is that it's got an individual brick that you can set in the inside here, which really is gonna work out well because the way that this is intended to be displayed with this or the way that it's gonna fit here is posting it vertically like this, which honestly does look pretty dang cool. However, I kind of want this to be at an angle, not vertically going up here. So what I did was I took the original brick and then chopped off the connection pegs and then rotated them by about 35 degrees and it created this little angled effect that I should be able to now just have inserted in here, which is gonna allow me to display it at an angle, which just again, compared to the original Lego size and scale, this is just gonna be a really cool display piece that I can have in the background in my studio or up on a shelf in my office somewhere on display. And I figured it was only appropriate since that website allows you to create your own custom builds, why not try to create my own? So I took a very basic guide that I found online for a Boba Fett spaceship and recreated that with all the appropriate colors, then individually exported each of those bricks out and got them all 3D printed. And what's great about this design is that it's a lot less bricks than what we had to print with the Millennium Falcon. And once I finished getting everything printed, it was time to get them assembled and fingers crossed this time it would go a little bit smoother. Even though this turned out incredible, one thing that I'm not loving is just how loose the ball joints are here once they're inserted. So I'm reprinting them right now and I've added a fuzzy skin modifier directly to the ball area that will hopefully allow us to better pose these little wings. Just as a comparison, here is the version that has no fuzzy skin applied and it's completely smooth. This is a slight fuzzy skin. And then this is the extreme fuzzy skin option. And this is gonna be the best one that we're working with. You'll see when we pop this one in, it's a good bit more friction held in place. It's still a little loose, but it should be able to maintain the position wherever we end up 
placing this. So if I wanted to go at a slight angle, it's gonna be angled and I'm not worried about it moving around. Now this is so cool. This right here, I actually might enjoy this one more than I do the Millennium Falcon. This just turned out ridiculously cool. If anything, I might go back and adjust the wing piece here, this flat piece to be a like a triangle piece to just give it a little bit more of an angular look to go with the rest of the body of the ship. But this just turned out so cool. And it's like a it's just a big chonky size and actually seems like it might be relatively accurate in comparison to the Millennium Falcon scale here when they're sitting next to each other. And obviously this is just the baby of the bunch, but it's still ridiculously cute. Now, obviously, if you're interested in printing any of these for yourself, I'll have links to all of the files that I used for these projects listed down below. And let me know in the comments what you think of these supersized Lego prints. This was way more fun than I was anticipating, and I'm loving the end results of how these turned out. I also wanna say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continuous support of me making goofy videos just like this one here. Again, this was just way too much fun to get all printed and put together. Thanks again for watching you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye now. A thousand percent recommend printing some of these for yourself.